So I recorded an entire clip earlier that would make sense with the progression of today's tutorial. Got home, looking at the footage, realizing that the entire time, the whole thing was out of focus. So this is what I said. So this is a Pro Explorer 600. It's Flashpoint brand. This is also the same, Flashpoint. This right here and this right here, a huge price difference. So today's tutorial is actually going to be showing you that you can have a small little speed light and still light up a very large room and get away with it. And no one will be able to tell the difference because the money you spend on this versus the money you spend on this may not be your budget in your budget right now. So get a more inexpensive piece of equipment so you can start making money and have a much smaller gap in your overhead and have some margin to make profit. On most cases, you can get by with shooting with this smaller one instead of this much larger one, and that's okay. So you'll see in the clips coming up, a huge tall ceiling and one speed light. It lit up the whole room. Check it out. first order of business is that I want to capture all of that in my shot. So everything that this place has going on, I capture everything. I'm going to scoot back far enough where I can get most of the couch all the way probably to that corner right there and then over and then all that up there. I want them to see all of that ceiling real estate that goes way up there and how nice and pretty it looks and how tall it is. Now being in such a large room, normally I have to use a lot of power, which is why I like that bigger light right there. But I'm gonna show you how you can do a large room like this with just a speed light. All right, so here's a speed light. I use Flashpoint. My big light is Flashpoint. This small one is Flashpoint. Uh, I use it for weddings, portraits. I even on some portraits will take this and use a very inexpensive setup that maybe cost me a hundred bucks to attach to this because if I can get the same quality for a cheaper price, it's kind of dumb for me not to do that. There's no point in spending more money on something that I don't really need if it does the exact same thing. So let's look. With all this wood going on right here, all that wood, it's going to like suck in all the light that I am using. So if I'm using something like this and I don't have that extra power behind it, so what I've done is up my ISO to 400. And I'm tilting it slightly up like that because I want to show all of that that goes up like I showed you just a minute ago. Do my first shot, my ambient shot, and now I look at the lights. So all the lights up there with the details, there's a lamp way in the back. I'm looking at all that detail right there because I want my shutter speed to bring that down. So dull it down a little bit. That's what the shutter speed does. I have my f-stop at 6.3 just like I always do. It never changes. My ISO is at 400. So I dumb it down a little bit. I like 50 to 60. That's usually a pretty good spot no matter what situation you're in. It'll bring those lights down. So now I got my speed light. All right, so what's my settings gonna be on that? You gotta feel it out. So because this is not one of the big lights, it's a small light, I'm gonna have to do a couple of finaglings and kind of see what it does. There's a white ceiling right here. I wanna pop that light off away from what I'm trying to light up. That sounds counterintuitive, but this is a bounce flash technique like you would do in a wedding. So you don't want harsh shadows. You want it to be soft and there to be no real edges to it. So what you do is you put it up in the corner, pop that joker off. It's not terrible, but I, I need some more power. Power. Let's go one, one. Why not? Pop. Oh, that was good. Right now I have all this detail up there that I have on the camera. And so with the ambient and that one flash shot that I did with more power, it lit up the entire thing and it made it look very nice and natural and soft. Cause that's what you want. You want to use a flash without anybody knowing that you used a flash. It's not to brag about your flash skills. You want them to never know it's there. Just like in a portrait, you never want anyone to know you're actually using a flash besides a little bit of light. So you want the flash to be with the ambient light, not against it. And it'll look very natural and normal. 
and there's no windows in this shot, so we're pretty much good. Let's get into the editing. Okay, so here we are at the computer. Now I wanna show you kind of what I do from start to finish. You've seen how I shoot it with a, a small little speed light. I wanna show you how I get it into the program and the simple steps I do with editing. So in whatever folder I have the photos, I want to highlight them all. If you have one clicked, hit Command A, it will highlight them all. Right click, open with, I use Lightroom Classic. It's the one I like the best, classic guy, you know. Let it open. So now that it's opened, it's going to ask if you want to import. So if you have two that are the light gray and you have a darker gray, it will not import that one. So make sure you have that one checked. It'll be a lighter gray down at the bottom right. Click import and here we go. As soon as it looks like this, you can click D. And when you click D, the D on your keyboard stands for develop. So if you're in the library area, that'll show what you've imported. D is the same as clicking that develop right there. So what I wanna do now is my basic touch-ups. Now, on the settings in the camera, we have auto white balance setting. This right here, it had a lot of good natural light right here next to everything. It was this massive window, sliding two sliding glass doors going to the outside. So I had a lot of good natural light coming in. So the white balance looks really nice, really clean. Just wanna do a little bit of touch-ups there. Turn my brightness all the way up. Another little pro tip, when you are editing, make sure that the brightness on your screen is to a very high but comfortable brightness. Because if you don't have it there, you won't have the blown outs. So make sure that you always have it up. So what I wanna do is, I always wanna bring the highlights down. See, there were some blown out places right there. See, bring that down. Looks good. A little bit of contrast. So shadows, I wanna bring a little bit of shadows down, a little bit of blacks, a little bit of whites. So if you notice, if you ever go into a restaurant and the ambiance is a little darker, they have lights dimmed a little bit, uh, really the only time you want bright, airy photos is like a wedding type style uh, that, that sells really good. But on real estate stuff, you want everything to be clearly seen, but you also want it to look inviting. So warm colors are very inviting. Uh, so let's do a little bit of vibrance up just a little bit, a little bit of saturation. I don't see any crazy colors, color cast, but if you ever have any extreme oranges, I'll show you what this does. This little, for lack of a better word, nipple looking thing, click on that. And wherever you go, look at all this changing over here. Watch wherever you go, you'll see it. See it, pull it down. Now, obviously you don't want to take all that out because then the color's gone. The red, I'm gonna bring that back up because that's what color that was. Uh, make the orange maybe just a little bit because red does a little bit of, has a little bit of orange to it. But that goes all the way down. If you wanna change hue, saturation, luminance, you could even go to, okay, what do I wanna, what do I wanna correct over here? What is it gonna do? See it changing right there? Look at the zeros. It's moving, changing what, so I can bring that luminance down to not so bright or I can make it brighter, but Just kind of watching the light spots because that's what it illuminates is light. Very, very easy. So now what I'm wanting to do is sharpen. I like my radius smaller. I want them to be little tiny dots. If I hold down Option, or if you're on a PC, Alt, I think it is what it is. Hold Option down. And then see this masking? I wanted to finally sharpen the detail of the room, not the entire room. So that's what that mask does. Okay, I don't want to correct anything else. So the re I used to do this. I used to, uh, the transform part, the verticals, the levels, all that stuff, I would try to do it here. Well, then when I would bring it into Photoshop and I would try to auto align the layers, which I'll show you in just a second, it nine times out of 10 would always be wrong and I'd have to come back in and reset it and then try it again. I think it's because for each photo, it's reading it a little different, and so it'll it'll twist it, and not have it the same. So I don't worry about it until I come back into Lightroom, and then I do it as one of my finishing touches. So don't worry about that right now. And 
This is one of those where we're kind of down, but we're tilted up. We want to look at the all the detail to the ceiling. You can see how it goes way up in there with the details. I uh, just saw something. I want shadows to be up a little bit. There we go. I want some more detail back in the back. And then I want to get my white balance. That's okay right there. Okay. So I've done that with this first photo. And what I want to try to do is develop settings, copy settings. Uh, I don't think there's anything that I don't want done. I want the sharpening and everything. And then I'm going to highlight, shift and click these two, right click again, go to develop settings and paste settings. And that looks a little terrible because that actually, oh, I forgot there's not a window pool. Okay. This photo right here. Yeah. Remove you. I forgot. It's just the two, the two photos. So I want to try to bring that one up because what I'm trying to do is you see how the light shifts a little bit, but the dark and light areas are pretty close to the same, except you can see a little bit of flash right here because it only took two shots for this one photo. And remember what I said a minute ago, what I'm wanting to do is even back here, at this, I pointed out this lamp back here, I want it to be a little darker, set a little mood, a little ambiance, because that type of attention to detail, even though it wasn't even in the same room, is gonna what makes you stand out from your competition and other photographers out there that think they're photographers because they have a camera. So, that looks pretty good to me. Right now, all it is is a slight light shift, and that's what I want. Even the detail up in here, that little tiny flash got all the way up this and made that work. Now, see, this is a hard light right here because I was right next to it, almost impossible to not. That's why you always wanna point it backwards and to where you're going i tell you what you're wanting to light up, but that right there, you see the shadow disappear, that's gonna help repair that in just a minute. Okay, so we got this good and ready. I just copied the settings, so across my photos, all the settings are kind of the same. You don't do that on a window pool. Window pools are a separate edit on their own. You don't adjust like you're doing the inside. So right click, develop, I'm sorry, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. While this is opening up, if you like this channel, please do not forget to subscribe. And any pieces of equipment that I mention or that I work on like this right here that makes my life a million times easier, all links will be down in the description below. Even if you just wanna do grocery shopping and you wanna buy a case of water, if you use my links at the bottom at no extra cost to you, you support the channel and I appreciate it back to business so now we are in this is why i like lightroom and photoshop because they work seamlessly together so it will always have this one on the top highlighted so shift and click now we go up to edit auto align layers this right here make sure it's in the auto position you can see a little bit that it changed what i'm looking for is solid lines so this railing up here this right here these over here, if they aren't moving and they're exactly where, cause see this could be tricky cause it looks like it's actually moving, but it's not, it's just a light shift. You do solid lines, the lines on the wall, whatever you want to look at. You see those are not moving, you know it aligned well. Sometimes you have to take it, shut down Photoshop, go back into Lightroom, see what the problem is, redo it and it works fine, usually the second time. So now what I want to do is put a layer mask over the top of this photo. So this is our, this one that I'm seeing, which is the eyeball next to it. This one right here is our flash shot. It always, the reason I take it in this order is because when I take the photos, you want ambient, flash, window, whoopsie shot. That's the, in case you have a reflection in the window in your window pool. We didn't have to worry about windows right here. So we just had an easy two photo job. Now. You could probably do that on a lot of your jobs, closed windows and little bathrooms that are up in the, uh, you know, little small windows, don't really matter. I like to do window pulls on every single opportunity I have because it makes me stand out a little bit from other people that don't take the time to do it. So a little bit of effort goes a long way, makes you stand out. Anyways, this is the flash shot and this is the ambient shot. So you can see this layer, 
So think of it like a cake. If you don't know Photoshop very well, or even if you're editing an Adobe Premiere Pro video, everything that is on the top is going to be filtered through that. So since this ambient layer is on top, that's the first one I am seeing on top. They're stacked like this. They're spread out in Photoshop like this, but when you're looking at the image, the one that's on top is like this. So you're seeing that first, top first, top first, top first. So how do we make that go away so we can start painting back in what we want? Alter option and click this layer mask. Black is hide, so you can't see anything behind it. It just completely will make it disappear. See, put the mask on there. Now it's just a flash shot. It's as if I did this and only, you can only see the flash. So back up here, make sure you are on the layer mask and I push B for brush. Now this right here isn't a bad image at all. It actually looks pretty good except for some complications right here. I'm gonna keep it in normal mode because I matched my colors up pretty good so I don't need luminosity. So make sure that my brush is white. I have it at a 5% flow. I can do 10. Watch this change. Watch it not look flashy anymore and the light kind of shift and change. I don't want it to look flashy. Remember what I said a minute ago? I want it to look like there is no flash. I want it to be very, 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 very natural looking. I'll zoom out just a little bit so I can get on these edges. You can see the light begin to shift and change. Let's even go up to 30% on this right here because I know what I'm trying to do. See that, that flash line that was there is no longer there. Flash line that ended up on there, no longer there. Look at all that. Go back down to 10%, bring up that glow back there a little bit. I'll make that, see this little, kind of see it's still a little flash. If you push the brackets when you're in brush mode, that are top left of your inner key, it'll make it go bigger or smaller, just the left and right. Go back up to 40%, cause I don't want those jokers to be there. I don't wanna paint too much around that light because when I do, it'll make that light super orange and super bright. I don't want that. I'm going for this white ceiling area to make it look natural. No flash lines. Because even a professional sometimes can accidentally have flash lines. So this is how you fix it. And I wasn't too worried about the, uh, see how that light changed? Wasn't too worried about this light. It did, uh, it did work, but I knew later that it would cause complications. So I didn't want that. Okay, and that's shadows from outside. I'll make some of these shadows come back in that's natural from outside. Okay, make my brush a little bigger. See, I don't like that. Another pro tip, when you're doing this and you're painting, lift up your brush. Why? Because if you don't, you'll have this streak and you do all this, you're painting real good and you like it, you lift up your brush and you're like, oh, I don't like that part. And you go back, which is Command Z. It will undo the last action and you end up undoing all that you just did that you did like. So lift up the brush, lift up the brush. A little bit of light here and there. Make my brush real big. Bring in a little bit of light. Like that. And actually, Push E for erase. I don't like this little blue part right here because what that is, all that is is the, uh, it's the sun from outside. And the sun from outside when we're inside with orange lights and you have an auto white balance, it will make the light from outside, the sun be blue because there's a fight against blue and orange all the time. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Go back to brush, Let's see what this looks like. I want that to be really flashy right there, uh, but that's the alternative is blue. So I'm just erasing that so I can keep it. All right. 
so okay that's why I'm on 40% I don't like 40% I usually stay about 10 just dabbing dabble do you dabble do you these little lines right here click it and go flatten image it'll bring everything together command save and what that does at the bottom here watch this see that change now we have the new and improved image so do some contrast bring up some shadows bring down some blacks maybe a little bit of let's see a little bit of saturation a little bit make that red pop and we want to go down again so it's cool when you bring it back in it sets everything back to zero so now you can sharpen it some more option or alt do the mask and then I don't want to do any correction with the up and down see that right there boom that is your finished image to show all the detail it's a little orange in some spots, but I'm not too worried about it. It's orange wood with orange lights on orange. The point is they get to see all the detail. You kept the flooring, the rock in the fireplace area. You kept the ceilings white. You kept the wall red and a nice crisp, vibrant red. That right there is how you use a speed light to light up an entire Hall room. So if you enjoyed this video today, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for staying to the end. As always, it is an honor and a pleasure to make these videos for you guys. And if you have any comments or questions regarding a issue you're having, you can comment down below and I will make sure to make a video specifically for your request. Thank you and we'll see you next time.